Hello everybody, my name is Zia Zawaza and this is Millennial Pennies. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, today I just want to talk about shares and how one can go about buying shares. I'm also just going to be talking about ETFs and I'm going to be talking about tax-free savings accounts, the benefits of same ETC. Before I even go further with this video, I just need to let you know that I'm not a financial advisor. However, if you are looking for someone who is a financial advisor, just look for someone who is FSCA accredited and then they can assist you with your financial advice. Therefore, anything and everything that I say in here shall not constitute as financial advice. Right, let's get into the video. <laughs> yeah, I need to define what shares are, okay? Shares are a portion of a company. So if you buy shares in a company, you are basically a shareholder of that company. Also, guys, please don't embarrass us. I remember when I was in... Um, okay, I don't know. I don't remember. But I used to be one of those people who would say that I believe that shares should also be, you know, included in one of the things that are on sale during Black Friday because it's unfair that shares are only accessible to people that have money and now that i think about it i just feel so stupid i feel i feel so stupid and i was so it's this whole thing being misinformed guys or or just not knowing about anything is just it leads you to is a noise but okay fine we're not there <laughs> we're not there so yes as i defined shares they are a portion of a company okay so if you own shares in a company you own part of that company so you are a shareholder in that company say for example if you own shares if you bought um shares in showbright ne? you are a shareholder in that company that's what it means so that comes with certain benefits again so if you own shares in a, a specific company as a shareholder it comes with some benefits so this is these benefits are basically ways in which you can make money from buying shares so there are two ways in which you can make money from buying shares that is capital growth and dividends capital growth is if for example showbright we're gonna use showbright because we're here now um so showbright if showbright does very well and you know a lot of people want to buy showbright shares so the demand of showbright shares is high so showbright shares increase at uh, the price of showbright shares increases because a lot of people are buying Shoprite shares. Does that make sense? <laughs> so that is that is how you make money from you know capital growth because the the value of your shares would have increased because there are more people interested in buying the shares that you would have bought in that specific company. Okay, and then dividends. So this is how dividends work. Say Shoprite ne, does very very well, very well for that specific year, and then the people who are running um shop right the, the 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 directors and the shareholders they feel okay you know what this company has um done very well for this year we then feel that this the shareholders or the investors of this company need to get a specific percentage of this um of this you know uh profit or this um or how the of the performance of the company right so they can say they can determine that for each share that one holds in the company they will get 50 cent of of you know uh, you know one would get 50 cent for each share that they own okay so if you own two shares for example of money one rand if you own three with money 150 you know that's just how it works so the more shares you earn the more dividends the, the higher the value of your dividends will be if that makes sense so that's basically how it, it how it works. There are two ways of make, making money, capital growth and dividends. So dividends are then paid out to the people who own shares in the company based on whatever value the company has decided to give to its investors. Okay, so I've dealt with defining what a share is. I've also dealt with how one can make money from shares. But now the whole concept of shares is just wild. How do you even buy them, you know? But of course, you can't just walk in the shop right and be like, yo, I want to buy your shares, you know? You can't do that. Like, it's just going to be weird. So all the companies that are publicly listed are listed in the JSE. So companies that are big enough to be publicly listed are listed in the JSE. However, so that's just, you know, South African companies. Some companies are listed in other stock exchanges, but I'm talking about South African um, um, companies specifically. They're listed in the JSE. So... 
But again, you can't go to the JSE and be like, hey guys, can I have shares? No. So you need to do something else. There's a way in which there's a like there's an agent, an entity that they make use of so that you can be able to buy shares from that entity. So they use um a brokerage. So you can then buy these companies, Showbride, Speak and Pay, all of them, have their shares listed in an entity called the stock exchange, the JSE. The JSE also cannot just have you buy the shares directly from them. You need to make use of a brokerage, a broker. That person or that entity will then allow you to buy shares from that entity. Okay. So there are a lot of different platforms in which you can buy shares. Some people buy shares from their own banks. They ba some banks do allow to, I think FNB is also one of those banks where you can, ooh, I do tend to be corrected here. I'm not, I'm not very certain, but I have um, seen it somewhere. I'm just not certain of my effects. However, one thing that I am certain of is Easy Equities. So this is also a platform which is very easy to use um, where you can buy shares that are listed on the JSE. So my second video of this one will show you how you can buy shares, how you can register on Easy Equities, what documents are needed, and how you can buy shares on Easy Equities, or even how you can deposit money on that platform. So stay tuned for that video. But basically, if you want to buy shares, if you feel like, okay, Showbright is the one, I've, I've seen your potential, I feel like you are the one, I want to buy your shares, fine, then go look for Showbright. So you need to register your account with Easy Equities, and then verify your account there what you, using your FICA documents. And then what you will do then is to look, browse through, search for Showbrite there and then buy the shares on that platform. So after buying your shares, you will also just determine obviously how much that share is. And then it will, like, like I said, my next video will just show you. You will then determine how much of the shares you want to buy or how much you want to spend in that company. So how many how many shares you want to buy or how much you want to buy for that makes sense. So yeah, that's basically how that works. And then now there is another thing called ETFs. These are exchange traded funds. What this entails is that these are group of companies. You know how finance gurus always say that you need to diversify your your um your portfolio, your for your investments so you need to you need to not just have one thing in which you're investing in because there are a lot of different companies or a lot of different um well, a lot of different companies that are listed on the jse they all in different industries though you know so for example there's Sasso, there is sobriety those two companies are not in the same industry obviously if the petrol industry is suffering the retail industry is not necessarily suffering right so it, it you 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 are balancing if you have both if you have shares both in 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 Sasol and you have shares in in um Shoprite. So there are things called exchange traded funds ETFs, which are it's it's like a a a bowl of um uh I don't know just a mixture of things like I'm a choice assorted you know um in that little bowl you have. Uh, uh, shares from different companies and from different industries and what that gives you or the benefit that gives you is that you are able to then diversify your investments so by just buying that one share because ETFs are also traded as if or they're also listed on the JSE as if they shares so you can buy that one ETF but automatically be buying a, from a lot of portions shares from a lot of companies if that makes sense so like say i'm a, I'm a choice assorted for example right i don't know what they're all called but um i know they're lemon creams and eat some more i don't know the other ones <laughs> but say lemon creams are sassel and it's some more um shop right and then there are a lot of other ones that i don't know there's clicks there as well let's say clicks is also one of them right so they're all in different these companies are all in different industries um so they all put in this one bowl. If one of the companies is suffering at that specific time, you will not necessarily, your ETF will not necessarily suffer as, 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 as an entirety because it has other shares that 
or in different industries that are not necessarily suffering suffering at that time. When I say suffering, I mean, you know, how a company can go through certain bad stages. For example, how um, that whole clicks incident, for example. I don't know if it actually did have a bad effect, though. Uh, effect but um it does happen that when a company has bad publicity that the the share price of that company drops or if you know the economy is just not doing well at that specific time like for example during coronavirus you know some companies were not well it still is coronavirus i just spoke as if no we are fine no <laughs> no no that's not the case at all so but during the first lockdown right everything was closed a lot of companies were not, you know, um, we're, we're not trading at the time. So there were some companies who were sort of suffering and some had to close and all of that. So if something like that ever happens to one of the companies which are on your ETF, that doesn't mean that your whole ETF will suffer or that you will lose value off of your ETF because there are other companies that are listed on there that are not necessarily in the same struggle. Okay. So what will happen then is that, so they do happen, if, if that company loses its value so much that it, um, it's not profitable anymore, profitable anymore, it does get discarded and then the ETF is also balanced, okay? So I just need to just, I, I, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm very clear on this one. So ETF is a bowl of pizza balls that has a lot of shares from a lot of different industries and a lot of uh, that has a lot of shares from a lot of different companies of different industries and that assists you in um basically diversifying your portfolio so there are some people who believe in just buying etfs because they are a safer bet than individual shares but there are some people that believe okay you know what fuck it <laughs> i'm gonna buy my individual shares anyway okay but um there's nothing there's no harm in buying both there's nothing that ever there's nothing that would ever harm you in buying both but of course that is your decision to make so that's just an option that you do have that is available to you so do what you will with that information okay so in um on on easy equities there is a south african account so it's called the czar account i think and then there's a tax-free savings account and then there's a usd account right so on the czar account there are um companies that are listed in the jsd in south africa and then so you can buy individual shares there and then there is the tax-free savings account where you can buy etfs and i'm just going to explain what a tax-free savings account is and then there's a usd one which are um international companies right so the tax-free savings account has ETFs. A tax-free savings account has a lot of benefits in that it is tax-free. <laughs> so the so there's a maximum amount in which you can invest in that account specifically each year. I think right now it's about 30, 36,000 per year. Um, and then you can invest up to a maximum of 500,000. And all of that money will not be taxed when you are taking it out. So you can buy ETFs of, you know, for however many years that you would like, but it has to be up to a maximum of 500,000 rand. And that is basically the benefit of getting um, a tax-free savings account. So it is safer if you just max out your, your tax-free savings account every year, because if you do not max out your, say for example, if you put in 2,000 uh, rand for six months and there's still some money left because that's not a maximum of 36,000 rand you forfeit the rest of that year if that makes sense so you will not be able if you if you don't put 500,000 if you don't sorry if you don't put um 36,000 rand in that year you will forfeit the rest of that year so you won't be able to say oh you're covering for that specific year no you can't so you for the next year, you will have a maximum of 36,000 rand. And then the next year again, you know. Um, so I hope this makes sense. So it is at least uh, clear-ish. Um, but I do want, I don't want to get too deep into how the Easy Equities app works. Because I want to have a designated video for that specifically. This video is already long. So catch me on the second video.
Bye.